So that's why I'm going to explain a little stuff. This is perpetually crooked. Come on. Looks so cute in the picture. All right. I'm going to explain a little stuff about the form. So conveniently, we have squares here, or they're rectangles, but you, you can approximate with your mind. So the form is a lot about controlling the space outside of you and controlling the space within your frame. So you, um, the language I use with this form to make it in very clear to everybody, instead of saying north, south, west, east, northwest, north, and all that, I just go front, left, right, rear. Then I go left, front, left, right, I mean right, front, left, rear, right, rear. So we're talking about the corners and the, the cardinals, like the cardinals would be the primary directions of north, south, west, east. And then the corners go into the corners. So you're talking about eight angles. Eight. And eight's sort of the magic number. Um, but so you, anytime you make a movement in this form, you're going to be facing one of those directions. So check yourself when you're doing it. For, so you always know where you're going, okay? And you're always coming from center. So um, the form historically is the bridge between Chen and Yang style. So Yang style is a more modern style. Chen style is a more ancient style. And this was a, a bridge form developed by Yang Lu Chan between Chen style and the, the inevitable Yang style, which within the 20th century became a lot less uh, martial and more performance oriented and more linear, okay? Because people were looking at the form from, a, from an audience, so the judges are seeing a, a profile moving back and forth, Whereas this ancient form is defending turf. It's like a turf war. It's like, this is my village, get out, and I'll fight you to the death kind of feeling. So everybody likes, I, me personally as well, the long form is a lot more energizing and empowering, therefore. All right, that having been said, we're gonna do a qigong that's relevant to the form. So qigong is repetitive exercise emphasizing the breath that uh, has the intent of healing and meditation rather than martial intent. But there's an underlying intent there because it's gonna give us more energy and, and uh, more, our, more body memory for the form which does have a martial intent. So, um, in choosing the Qigong, so I'm trying to make this class so it's assimilable to beginners, because we're now we're welcoming in Karen, and to my advanced students. <laughs> and Carrie's like an advanced beginner. Uh, so we, you know, we have people at all different levels here. So um, in order for, to make that happen, I, I want to just go over things in, in a real clear way that you guys have heard a million times over and over. But, it's, it's helpful to get reminded of this anyway. So um, what we've been doing, because there's theoretically 64 movements, if you don't include all the repeated sections in the form. So I divide it up into thirds, like 20, 20, 20. And that's a very convenient way to think about practically everything, is the beginning, the middle, and the ending. So between the, the middle third and the third third, the last third, is the crux of difficulty and the point at which you're the most, you know, uh, physically challenged. It's the most strenuous. And then it tapers down. So it builds up and then tapers down. And this is often how human activity goes. You break in, you, you get into something, you're, not, you're still not quite into it, then you get seriously into it. And then you burn out and you kind of, you know, 
work your way out of it. So it does kind of work that way anyway. Um, all right, that having been said, let's, let's just chill out with the ideals of Tai Chi, first of all, which are slow, sink, relax. Line up the navel with the, the navel, that's my navel, my face navel, and the nose, so they line up in a vertical plane. So you don't want to break that line when you do the form, in general. There's a few exceptions, there's always exceptions. Okay, so let's start with our palms right above the pubis, and we'll call that six o'clock. And we're gonna sink into gravity, so you wanna feel pressure on the ground with the bottoms of your feet. So if you stand up, you're gonna feel less pressure, and now you feel heavy. So go for the heavy. And turn to the right, and the arms, bend the elbows so the arms come up, go across the diaphragm, and sink left. The arms slide down. So you're making a circle around your navel. So we're going to add layers of information to this. So the circle goes at the same rate of speed as you're twisting. Your nose lines up with your navel. And we're thinking of our guiding principles in Tai Chi, which are slow, relax, and sink. Okay, that looks pretty good, everybody. We're going to add one more element, which is called a Taoist breath, a reverse breathing. This is a meditative breath. It's the opposite of how we breathe as human animals. And it's counterintuitive because we think on the inhale, contract. On the exhale, expand. So as you twist to the right, inhale, shorten the perineum, the small muscle in the genitals. You can tense your abs a little bit. Squeeze. And then when you descend down from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, relax the diaphragm, relax the perineum. So now we're doing this very simple qigong with reverse breathing. So the hands have as little innate movement as possible, which is another aspect to Tai Chi. Remember that you tighten on the inhale, contract on the inhale, expand on the exhale. We're going to do about 30 of these because that's about how much it takes for it to really have an effect. It's 30 repetitions. So, so that was about 10. So that was our first third. Now we're into our middle third. today than yesterday, and so if you put your hands like this, it'll be very warming. And if you let your fingers touch each other, it'll be more warming. our last 10. Relax the shoulders.
it. So this is working on a lot of levels. The, the touching of oneself brings you into the present moment, very much so. And it's very meditative because of the slowness. So it helps, it really helps get you into the Tai Chi state of mind before you even start Tai Chi. So you're not trying to bust into a feeling as soon as you hit the form. You're already in the feeling when you start the form. So it's very good. Now the thing to think about is that the lifting of the crown point. So if the tongue is, uh, the uh, tip of the tongue is on the upper palate, you're breathing lightly through the nose, which is really good for the pandemic because you're not shooting out moisture and air. And you drop the coccyx, relax the shoulders down, but lift the crown point. So you want to make sure you're never bending like that. It's a very straight back, hollow front, stretched in back. So it's, it's very Tai Chi-esque for posture. Good. All right, so we rotated in the guas here, in the, within the pelvic uh, girdle. We're rotating within the pelvic girdle. Now we're gonna twist at the diaphragm, okay? And the qigong and the warm-ups do a lot of the same things, okay? So sometimes we'll just do qigong and barely warm up, or do a lot of warm-ups and then feel like we barely need to do qigong, okay? So now we're gonna twist at the diaphragm. So you're twisting actually into the, this gua, this hip, inner hip area, inner thigh, and the diaphragm at the end because of the weight of the arms. And you're practicing a form of paida, which is the slapping and the massage. So Karen is doing the variant which is receptive. You, could ever, keep going, Karen, don't stop. Everybody take a look at the way Karen's doing it. Can you see how her form is, she is pulling in, She's doing what you call more of a grass girl's tail, like a Lou movement. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. And we're doing more of a pung, out and up, out and up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I, yes, this is like throwing, like you're throwing a rock in a lake. That's it. it well, you're, yeah, that's it, that's it. There you go. That's it. Okay, so the receiving has the same effect. Uh, hey, hi. So this is receptive. You see how I'm pulling it into my frame? Now I'm throwing out of my frame. So I want you to be aware of both of those feelings. Okay, let's hit the pecs. Let's go down the sides. Sides of the knees. Go to the ankles. Up the inseam. Get your gonads, whatever those things are in there. Down the front, stomach meridian, yay. Up the inseams. Okay, let's start at the kidneys. Down the butt. Down the backs of the legs. Achilles. Up the inseams. Good. Okay, let's rotate from the hips. Actually, let's, let's get the hip and knee at the same time. So take a step forward on the left. Oh, something I want to mention, too. This, the, this also defines yin and yang, that earlier exercise we did in a beautiful way. Yang goes up, yin goes down. Male principle going up, female principle into the earth. Right? It sounds sexist, but, you know, primitive culture. We're doing something from an ancient. And that's the way the blood flows, too. Where the returns to the heart coming up on the right and goes down out of the ventricles on the left. And that's blood circulation. So we're going with the flow. We're going very Taoist practice. Uh, OK, take a lunge and circle the knee. Small circles if your knee is sore. And eight circles the other way. And you can feel it working on the back hip too. Now let's see if you can make figure eights. So this goes in a little deeper. And the other direction. 
direction. And infinity signs. So now it's a horizontal figure eight in front of you. And the other direction. Let me just say that you can also do it this way. So this way is a little, uh, it involves a little less body parts, but it's still very good. So you want to lunge forward, not to the side. So I'm going to coming at you. That's it. So one hand vertical on, these, on the hip flexor, and then put this hand like this. You can feel your quad rippling under your hand and go, yeah, muscles. Do your thing. And figure eight. The other way. So do it at your own pace once you memorize this. few of these. These are very warming because your knees, your inner thighs are squishing together and keeping you nice and warm. So it's a, you know, the idea of warm up, yeah, you're really warming yourself when you do it this way. Okay, having contracted the hamstrings, I mean the uh, quads a lot, there's a, a number of ways to stretch the quads, this being one or just kicking up. But a lot of people like to just hold it. I haven't seen a sport that doesn't do that. Everybody I've ever seen in Olympic, anything, they always do that one. So the, uh, another way to do this, but the bricks are a little, I mean the, uh, you, you can get distanced from each other and take a piece of bench, you know, the wooden bench, and then just lay your quad on it, and then lift your chest. Yeah. This gets it even deeper, right? Nice. And then if you can, Put your uh, front leg at right angles, or make that effort. Yeah. Now, if you can, lift your back leg and pull it, your heel to your butt. That's deep. <laughs> you don't want to wiggle around too much and rip your patella. So you gotta be careful with that. So you can play with it by just trying to drop your hips and lift your chest. And feel the difference in how it stretches you. Can I say that my goal is not to hurt myself? Yes, that is the main goal. The main goal is to feel better, well, not worse. Goal, that's my main goal. Yeah, do not overdo it. Stretch. I've got most all, most of my bad injuries are from overstretching, not from exertion. Okay, so we're going to stretch the fronts now. Yeah. 
So you can just jiggle your quads a little bit and then go right above your knees and look forward. You can bend your knees if you want. This is a back stretch. Benches in the way. Oh, you mean you can't see what I'm doing? Yeah. You can copy the other students too, because I'm trying to video it for pe other people oh, that see. can't be with us. So if you can massage down your femur bones, be really careful with this, because it can hurt your back. So be really careful. And then, if you can get to the ground and rock forward and back. Now if you need to keep your knees bent, keep them bent. The goal, again, is to not hurt yourself. What part of my stretching? Your hamstring. The whole back, your whole back, actually. Okay, let's go to a crouch if you can. Some people have the tight ankles or the tight yeah. knees. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, why don't you try that? Some people could try that way, holding on to the bench. Yeah, I like that. So uh, you can use the bench in a lot of ways. Another another good one, it's better if it's a little higher, but it's just to go in into it to stretch the back. Uh, hip flexor. So there's a lot of ways. We have a lot of, yeah. Doesn't always have to be the floor. Okay, so it's easier to do two legs at a time. It kind of divides up the the discomfort. Now, now let's try one leg at a time. So put one leg in front, the other leg in back, and take that long walk down your front leg, reaching through the floor. And then use the weight of your head. Do some deep breathing. Then lift your front toe. And lastly, lift the back heel. And that'll pitch your upper body weight over that crucial hamstring area for a deep, deep stretch. And then switch them out. Switch the legs out. However you want to do it. One vertebrae at a time. Woo, good. So I like what Sharon's doing, which is the inner thigh stretch. So we have lots of ways to stretch the inner thighs without sitting on rocks. So let's let's do the way that emphasizes Tai Chi footwork. So that's going to be shifting from high tiger to high tiger. And keep in mind that the rule is the direction the weight's going to shift, that's the foot that moves first. So you're in that wide stance, you're going to shift to the left, the left foot opens 45, the right foot is 90. And don't do it like this, like the bad uh, clip art for touchy. <laughs> And open right, pull across, turn in left. Hips are level. Open left, pull across, turn in right. Open, close. Open, close. Open. All right, let's let's do let's continue with that theme of opening and closing of the gua. So to stick your toe in, this is a closed gua. Open gua. Neutral gua. Just right now we're doing something different. 
So now just stand like this, put your toe in, close, neutral, open. I'm just defining terms, good. Neutral, close. All right, let's just do it. Do it without touching the toe to the ground, okay? So feel that action in your hip. Of, we did it when we were doing this, right? But we were planted, right? So this is close, open, close, open, right? Close, open, neutral. All right, let's do another little leg thing. So we're gonna go close, open and neutral and shake it out. Close, open, neutral. Close, open, neutral. And let, let your foot, feel like you're trying to kick your foot off your ankle. Yeah, like, like you know how when dogs, it should be like when dogs go swimming, right? Yeah, that looks good. Right, and it's just to the side, like just like when dogs are trying to shake the water off their fur. Yeah. All right, good, good. Um, we we're ready to start the form. I think I'm gonna turn this off for now because I'm gonna be running all over the place.